So, so a rite of passage happened to, yeah. your, to your young boy. Well, yeah. b- before I get directly to the rite of passage, I, I kind of want to throw this to Alan because Alan's younger than us, and Alan had the internet like in school before because we didn't have really the internet in school. Wes, you might have had what, like two years of the internet. In <laughs> I mean, the last couple were some seriously slow dial up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was yeah. It was more of a hassle to uh, you just might as well go to the encyclopedia if you really I mean, were I had like a rough DSL. I wasn't really moving. A rough but... DSL. I mean <laughs> we're t- and that's I, hey, that's high that's high school. I got some DSL I think maybe. Dude, I'm talking DSL like... to me standing for something totally different. Oh uh, well yeah. Yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this thing did. I'm talking Errol's internet fucking squelch. It had to connect to some phone number in Aberdeen for us. And then if somebody nice. called and you didn't have your call waiting disabled by dialing yeah. like star something, you were off ski. It was it, yeah, that it was, was more middle school for me. You, you fucking old fucks. OK, well, see, that was like adulthood for me. So yeah. I bring that up, Alan, because I, there seems to be a phenomenon that I just found on my nine year old boy's paper today that I'm I'm amazed by and the, the, because. It, it ended up on our pieces of paper, and I feel like it ended up on pieces of paper in generations before us. And that's the infinite S. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. The three lines, you figure out how to make the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. I've, I found it on one of his pieces of paper. I'm like third grade, nine years old. I wonder if this is like a consistent thing like that's been uniform since as old as mankind. I wonder if we're going to find like a fucking cave in France yeah. with fucking like fingerprint and a fucking infinite S fucking dr- drawn on the wall by a toddler. Yeah, but it's going to be one of those fucking desks that like with the thing attached, you know what I mean? <laughs> Just to the standard fucking, yeah. Because it's yeah. carved into like every, I'm pretty sure like those desks, if purchased new, which I'm pretty sure they're not, do come standard with the S carved in it somewhere. And they don't tell you where. It could be the seat portion could be the back, could be the front, could be underside, could be next to a piece of gum. That's a, actually a, probably a fucking, like, an upsell. You can put gum underneath of it to deter kids from putting gum under there. It's fucking already ruined. <laughs> but I guess I'm amazed by this because, one, where did it come from? Like, who was the first kid that, like, came up with that design? And, 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 and Or has it always been? Is it the emblem that has always and forever will be? It's existed before time hatched itself from the fucking singularity, and it just is encoded in our DNA. Because, like I said, we didn't have the internet, so this is almost like a word-of-mouth kind of passed-down, generationally kind of just emblem. that got, like, once you learned it and you had to fucking... God, how do you do it? And you'd ask your buddy, and you'd be like, dude, how do you do that thing? And finally you got it, and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. I've got, and it was and it was done. And once you had once your DNA contained the information, it could never be forgotten. You can always make it now. Yeah, I guarantee if you grab a pencil and paper, you can do one yourself. You yeah. might do the first one backwards. Maybe. Then, okay, matter. all right, all right, yeah. Gotta, gotta, gotta do the lines the other way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or, say it's kinda like that that the, the he he was a brave man who first cracked open an oyster. Same applies yeah. to this. I don't get know how that. Bra- bravery doesn't necessarily apply, but I would say get this, like you can fucking if you've never done it, go you can go on Wikipedia and there's a little a little graphic that shows you exactly how to do it. So you know What's it called? So What's the official name? Uh the Wikipedia article is called Cool S. That's it. <laughs> that's it. That's what it's called. So I mean if that's what the Wikipedia article call is called, that's definitely what it's called. Also known as Super S, Universal S, or Middle School S. Look at that. It's got you see what I'm saying? It has no real tangible name. Nope. And everything that no. it's 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 all referenced in like this universality kind of that everyone just knows that it's a thing, mm-hmm. but no one knows why, where, when, who, or what it is. It just is. Right. Yeah. Like, um, let's see. Exact origin of cool S is unknown, but it became prevalent around the early 1970s as part of graffiti culture. Mm. Uh, cool ass consists of fourteen line segments. Blah blah blah. Yeah. It's got a formula. Yeah, it has. It has been compared to the infinity symbol, which fair. If you were to turn it on its side. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Interesting. It has an origin portion to that. So I was gonna say because this, this is one of those ones that's like, uh, you know, there's, there's been debates for years. Where did hip hop originate? And all the boroughs in New York City have you know a claim to this: Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Manhattan. Not so much Staten Island, but, yeah, but there, you know, you just... there's there's people around the same time, around the same like late seventies, 
uh, sampling era that say, you know, this is this is the neighborhood where hip hop started. I wonder if there is, you know, cuts of the of this great country where they claim that, yep, started here, late early seventies, graffiti culture, Omaha, wow. Nebraska, right here on this bridge. <laughs> this is the oh, first one. You're looking for ground zero because I've again I've seen like um, I, and I I honestly I can't even like mimic it because I'll be will be canceled for just racism in general if I try to it mimic I saw a YouTube video black and white grainy and it sees three African American gentlemen and they're doing like a ooh, da, ba, 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 and they're but they're rhyming and it's not necessarily what you would call hip hop but I would definitely say that like the the seed of hip hop is obviously blossoming before your eyes I mean guys I I'd have to assume people have been rhyming to music for much longer than the boroughs of New York City. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I would say so. I mean, you like, like most like rock songs coming through like the 40s and 50s with the, 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 the metric and the meter and then the, 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 just the, the lyricist of rhyming, you know, in the last, last uh, word of a sentence. Yeah. But dumping it over to a beat and the culture, yeah. getting some graffiti going on. And designing that infinite S, maybe it's the maybe that was designed to show how to do the 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 the, the flippity spin move for the break dancing. <laughs> I don't know. We we might be. Uh, we, 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 this is drunk history right now. Yeah, doing pretty it much. In, wildly incorrectly, but no, it's good good for your boy, man. I tell you, like when you told me that before Alan jumped on, I was like, oh really? Like, yeah, third grade, nine years old, and I was like, that goddamn I. I couldn't tell you that pretty spot on when I first drew my first one and thought that I had climbed, climbed Mount Everest. I was like, look at that. I held it up. I was like, holy shit, that, that is beautiful. And then proceeded to write super cool and bubble lettering, bubble lettering, but every other letter after that sucked. You know, but that S, that thing was like a goddamn gold medal. And the other thing I wanted to ask you, Alan, what rumors... Did, see, this is the thing. This is why I don't know if it works for you and your generation. Like, what rumors did you hear that are universal growing uh, up? No, nah, we had this discussion the other day because it popped up um, on, like, a TikTok or something. But it was, like, in middle school, how did fucking every... Because, like, we didn't really have... We legitimately didn't have, like... I was still playing fucking Oregon Trail and shit. Like, we didn't... We weren't... We didn't do shit. So, how did everybody know that Marilyn Manson fucking removed a rib to suck his own penis. Right. Like, <laughs> how did that, like, was it just at dances on weekends once a month? Like, is that how shit got, like, I don't understand, but everybody knew it. And, like, yeah. everybody my age is well aware of that rumor, but not true, right? So Sure. Exactly. But, see, and I think what is even more amazing about that is everybody just, like, suddenly knew that rumor all at once. Yeah. It wasn't like it took, like, years for it to trickle down. Like, because Marilyn Manson's, like, Zenith was only like a year or two long. I mean, his career lasted longer than that, but that moment in time, that snapshot when that rumor came out was just like everybody all of a sudden just knew it. Like you woke up one morning, downloaded with some bullshit information. <laughs> it's yeah. true. It's, it's he came, very true. He, he was the co-star in the Wonder Years. You know, <laughs> that was the other one. Acting, he came in, he got, got into singing and, and songwriting. Let me ask you this, Alan. Did a specific group of people or single person happen to have some male fluids uh pumped from their stomach in your generation oh yeah absolutely yep who who was uh, it uh little kim i think it was was it little kim <laughs> yeah. yeah see yep. that's what's hilarious for us it was new kids on the block and for like my brother's age it was rod stewart <laughs> <laughs> All of them had the same amount of male juice wow. pump, pumped out of their stomachs. Yeah. Hey, man. That's, <laughs> that's such a ridiculous rumor. <laughs> no, I might believe the little Kim one. I don't even know what to say to that. Yeah, that's, the little Kim one might be true. <laughs> like, the other two is like, oh, that's weird. Well, not that weird, but like, it's kind of the, the, the Richard Gere one was was universal, him getting the gerbil removed from his asshole. Yeah. I forgot. See, yeah. That one I feel like had been around for a while, though, and I actually may have found the origin of this because I heard someone else bring it up and, and started doing some research. Was it the origin to the, uh, probably a pet store in North Hollywood somewhere? No. <laughs> Supposedly, that rumor was legitimately started by Sylvester Stallone 
in the late 70s because apparently there was like I don't I think there might have been a little love triangle thing going on between him and Richard Gere like a co-star kind of thing and Sly was pissed and told people that that's something that Richard Gere had done and then I guess a couple of grips overheard it and they told one friend and they told two friends and they told four and they told six and then boom and all of a sudden and Sylvester Stallone denies it to this day but of course you would. Why wouldn't you? You have to. I mean, but imagine being the guy who started a rumor about an A-list celebrity that still exists like 45, almost 50 years later. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just like, it should, what's Sly now? 75? Yeah. Probably. Something like that. You know, he's a bit early. I would, he's not, I don't think he's south of 70. He's got to be seven something. And yeah, you know, 77. 77. Okay. And you figure he's probably in relatively good health, but he's on, you know, he, that father time isn't on his side. I would love on his deathbed. He was like, hey, look, um, just want to let you all know. Yeah, I did start that. That was 100% me. That was 100% me. I, I spread that through Hollywood parties. Man, it was great. I couldn't believe I didn't believe it was going to have the success it did. It was like wildfire from the Pacific to the Atlantic. I know. Every, everywhere. I bet other countries might even be aware of it. Like, I wonder if Richard... God, imagine being Richard fucking Gear, dude. Imagine being... Mm. Two people you have to imagine being. One, Richard Gear, like, walking into a pet store. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know in the back of his mind. And two, imagine being Mario Mendoza, walking around, hearing that fucking phrase. <laughs> and you know it's about you. And you're still alive. They couldn't wait till you're dead. Yeah. I just think of some of these other good, uh, good, like you say, rumors circa around that time that just happened to either hit, you know, anywhere town USA and, and live on and on and on, whether they be, you know, the rumors that we heard or just a spackle of different details or in, in this case, having semen pumped from three different groups of celebrities, different, <laughs> totally, totally random. I mean, I guess it's a wild thing in Hollywood. You know, you just consume a lot of cum and every now and then you got to get it pumped out. You know? Not a big yeah. deal. Yeah, I know. Why does it even have to be pumped out? Like, why couldn't you just like either one puke it out or just, you know, good source of protein, go get a couple pounds of muscle, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's the local, there's the, the, the Ripken one, you know, what Murr believes that. Uh, I believe that. I, 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 I believe that to be true. I believe that Kevin Costner and Cal Ripken Jr. got into a fisticuffs. I believe that to be true. Yeah, I could believe it. It would have taken place in a time where, like, evidence could not exist. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, 1997. I mean, that's yeah. like right around the time where like yeah. there weren't reporters like around every corner. Yeah. Uh, the internet was not a thing. Um, it was around the time I was believing the Marilyn Manson removed a rib to suck his own penis. Good point. See? Yeah. See, you know there's multiple mean? deniability all yeah. over the place. Wes, let me ask you, why don't you believe it? Because you really seem well, really staunch that like this could not have <laughs> happened. So the thing like initially, and I don't know <laughs> – if you remember the first time we had this conversation, that probably twenty-three-ish years ago. Uh, so, like, I think it's the year the, the year Ripken was retiring when he was doing his like, you know, his, his tour. Because you were combining two separate rumors. You were combining the rumor about the lights being turned off because Ripken was running late, and Cam Camden Yards was having like a power issue, and Kevin Costner and Ripken get into fisticuffs, and you said the. He got into fisticuffs, rolled his ankle, and then the stadium authority caught wind of it. So they said, oh, we're having a power issue. And they couldn't start the game until 8.05 in lieu of Ripken's triumphant ass-beating return. No, I, I, I wouldn't have said, said like, ankle. He said, after, I kicked his, after he kicked his ass, I pulled this gerbil out of his ass. <laughs> <laughs> See? You know, as I was kicking his ass, a gerbil fell out. Yes, mm, thank right. you, Alan. Right. Yeah. God, get the fucking details right, dude. Yeah. I, <laughs> I I don't remember combining the two, but I can see myself possibly uh, combining the two. But I wouldn't have said ankle. I would have said he hurt his back in the altercation. But, I mean, mm -hmm. they're two grown men, and I know it seems weird, but, like, they are in the same orbit in some capacity. And I do believe that Kevin Costner was, like, banging his wife at some point. So that would give him, you know, calls to want to fight another man. Or even if they weren't fucking, like, if they were just, like, hanging out and he looked at her all with that, 
you know, sexy Kevin Costner face circa 1997. Yeah, if I'm Cal Rifkin, I'm losing my hair. All I got left is these baby blues. My career's getting ready to wrap up in a couple weeks. Like, shit, man. Fuck you, Kevin Costner. I'll show you some baseball. Fucking bat him around the fucking house. <laughs> well, just, it's like, it, it's such a straw man. It's like, here's the theory. It's correct. Now prove me wrong. I can't, you know, I don't... <laughs> You said and get like so you're saying I'm prove right. that Kevin Costner didn't get a gerbil removed from his ass. It's kind of like the same prove that Woody Allen didn't have male you know, prostitutes lip whipped cream out of his asshole. I'm just saying that they got in a fight, okay? I'm not saying yeah. anything else. I'm saying that that No, and I do believe that there was a point where there was a couple of occasions. One of them was when the lights went out in Camden. There's that occasion, but there's another situation where Cal had a bad back. And they were talking about him sitting. And then he didn't. He played like an inning or he pinch hit or something. He got in the game in some capacity. And it wasn't mm. like, and it was almost like, eh, is that really part of the streak? And I'm telling you, that was when, that was around the time that everyone was like, oh, I heard Kevin Costner and Cal got into it at his house. And I'm not even saying Cal whipped his ass or didn't whip his ass. I'm not saying Cal got his ass whipped. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes you can win a fight and come away more injured than the other guy. And sure. I'm just, I'm just saying, as a pro athlete, Kevin Costner, you can limp in front of a camera. You can't limp the first base. Where did where did Kelly Ripken and Kevin Costner cross paths? I don't fucking know. Now yeah, you're see, asking, this is the this is I the would, details. It doesn't. Don't let facts get in the way of a good conspiracy. I'm, I'm I'm I will go like, back and I will do some research post show. But like you okay. said, it's been 23 plus years, and I don't really remember all of the details, as they're not fresh and ready in my mind. Like they mm-hmm. were back then. Yeah. Were there um, were there differences? Hold on. Like, okay, I heard, and I don't know if this is true, that uh, William H. Clinton put a cigar in Monica Lew- Lewinsky's hoo hoo and then smoked it. Yes, smoked it during a um, like a cabinet meeting. Really? Yeah. Wow! With that with that fresh musk all over the tobacco oh, yeah. leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. POTUS. <laughs> Doing POTUS things, man. <laughs> Sounds dirty when you say it like that. Ooh, POTUS. <laughs> That's what he had on, on that cabinet. cigar. No, not Mr. President today. It's POTUS. All right. <laughs> She's referring to me as that. What's, so, what's the point in being president if you can't pull? I mean, that. you know what? Then that was the last time I feel like that shenanigans was able to be pulled. You mean the, oh, the POTUS being sexually scandalous? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's all sorts of, like, stories of, like, LBJ and him fucking with secretaries and, like, just, I mean, Reagan seemed pretty straight-laced. And then you get to, like, there's rumors about um, H.W. Bush. Um, You know, Bush was pretty straight-laced. Obama was straight-laced. But Clinton, hmm. Clinton was the last frisky president, man. And I think he's the last frisky president who, by the way, obviously didn't get away with it but did get away with it. But the last one, you can't, you just can't do that shit anymore. Yeah, I mean, y'all, we had to know something was coming, man. He's a southern white governor who played fucking saxophone with the shades on. He was mm-hmm. definitely touching an aid at some yeah. point. <laughs> Everybody knew that shit was coming. Like, <laughs> yeah, and coupled with the fact that your wife has presumably starts hitting for the other team, you know? Oh yeah, she's not yeah. interested in you at all, and you're like, well, I got to, I got, I got to scratch this itch, you know? Well, like, and now yeah. what we know about the whole island adventures, I mean, he was obviously into, you know, probably a little. He was probably he was obviously into more than Monica, if you will. Yeah, I've heard that psychologically, guys like that in power sexually get turned on when they are being dominated. Like the psychological, sure. because it, you, you're 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 in a twenty four seven. You're in a position of power. You are authority. You call shots. You make decisions. You sign bills. You veto things. And when it comes to the bedroom, you want to be fucking commanded and told what to do. You want to get and, and get shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And no, you get a bunch of cum dumped in your stomach. It's <laughs> psychologically pretty sound, so here, Wesley. <laughs> well, that and I mean, in his situation, I mean, I think somebody like walked in like immediately, immediately following them, like you know, buttoning up and everything. Mm-hmm. So th- that's why they're. I'm mean, and he like he all when she was in the crowd before everybody found out, he would always come up and like give her a little that little handshake that you that little dainty woman handshake you know you just grab the fingers like hey how you doing <laughs> See, that was that was the mistake right there he like 
She was in photo ops and shit. She was in the background. He was holding fucking presidential medals, shaking hands with fucking war veterans and shit. And she's just back there like... You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like uh, yeah, it was a bad look. Slick Willie did, just kind of fucked up. He got a little ahead of himself, you know. And I know I might have brought this up before, but that's where the Drudge Report came from because Matt okay. Drudge was using, still using film when everybody else had switched over to digital. And he's like, "Man, that chick keeps showing up like everywhere Bill Clinton is." And yeah. he started going back through with the little eyeglass thing, looking at uh, like the the negatives. And he's like, "Holy shit, she's in every." She's in every photo op for the last, like, four months. Who is this woman? And then he looked into it, and bada-boom, bada-bing. And then not that that it didn't help matters that, like, every time they did that little handshake, she gave him goo-goo eyes, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't like a sign of respect. It was like, God damn, I want to fucking nail you on the cabinet floor. Yeah. Right? That's right. I want to push – I want to fucking give new – Ginkridge, a front row seat to <laughs> extravaganza. It's <That sounds> awful. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've mixed too many things in there. Like, oh, I'm gonna give you the Newt Gingrich. <laughs> I'm POTUS. I'm a POTUS, damn it. <laughs> Beat us <some> bills. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ain't no Bill didn't veto that. Mm. <laughs> right, right here. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Middle class levels, everyone. Fox man, Alan Murr. I had a, uh, I had a pretty good uh, little funny road rage story going into work today. Yeah, you're y'all still ready on that horse, one? huh? <clears throat> that, that horse is infinite. That horse is going to be running like a goddamn wild pit bull stallion until you know I what? die. So someday when I, we get a phone call and it's like, <laughs> oh my god, West got <laughs> West got shot on the side of ninety five, fucking deadlock traffic, like. Can't say I didn't see that coming. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong. Um, and I want you to get to your story, but I do want to. Ju- I just. I kind of want to s- introduce this to you as just like a. I don't know, happy exercise or a fun exercise. Mm-hmm. Could you, like, knowingly, like, pretend to be like you're happy by this stuff just to see how that works out? Like, oh yeah, come on in. Come on in. No, don't worry about how close to my bumper you are. You just slide right on in. I'm sure you're running late, too. Could you fool yourself by doing that for, like, a week and just see how it works? <laughs> That's it. Uh, or would you turn into me, myself, and Irene, like Jim Carrey from that movie where you just end up suppressing some fucking rage monster only to rear its head 20 years later and fucking, I don't know, like, kill, like, a church full of nuns? Yeah. I'd say pro- probably the latter. Not a... I was going to say I'm not a betting man, but that's not true. I bet a lot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I bet that's what would happen. <laughs> that is pretty, that's, the odds are that would be the case. So to get from the neighborhood I live in to the highway that I need to get to to go to work, it's a T, and there's two lanes. The left lane is left only. The right lane is right only to go either north or southbound on 295. I need to go southbound out of the city. It's a turn only lane. On occasion, you will get some dumb motherfucker who uh, does not understand that it's a right turn only. So they need to wait for the light to turn green, and then they turn left like an ignorant asshole. I assume that was the case. So I, I did the when – there, when there was a break in traffic because you can turn right on red, I did the burp, nothing. Burp, burp. And uh, how, how long of, did you wait before you fucking gave him the machine gun Kelly on the fucking old? <laughs> on the old. Well, I, think, I think you just heard it. I think that's how it went. Is that exactly how it went? The, the cadence went. Well, this is the first one. Yes. Burp, burp, burp. Burp, 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 then the string of cars came, and then there was another break. And at that point, I was just like, burr, 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 burr. and the light turned green, and they turned right. So they were just waiting for not a break in traffic, but for the or the green light to turn right, which you can turn right on red. They get in the middle lane. I get in the far left. Uh, they roll the window down to give me a big old your number one sign. And I gave them back the with the window rolled down on the passenger side. Hey, you're having a nice day. You should go home and masturbate. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so my temper's flared already. All right. And I get down to another highway, which leads to Annapolis. And someone's doing the left hand, the left lane. I'm doing the speed limit. 
All right. And it's like, I'm waiting for a break in action so I can get in the middle lane and go around him and finally happens. And normally when I do that, I then give these people the death stare as I'm going past them and some sort of like, uh, a look of someone with sub intelligence starts with an R that, that word. And, uh, uh, I had to like quickly look, can't verify what type of law enforcement they were, but they had a, they, they were decked out in some sort of law enforcement outfit. I was like, Oh shit. Oh fuck. <laughs> they saw me. I don't know. They could have been a security guard at a fucking mall or something. Yeah, I don't know. Probably. Yeah. What kind of vehicle yeah. was it? That's really the question. Subaru. Like a, yeah, it was, that was a security guard. Out back, yeah, something or other. That was a loss prevention associate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah. she stared at me. She gave me a look, and I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh. I'll, just, I'll just go around her. <sighs> yeah, man. I, I fear for... I fear... I don't fear, like, you're going to get into, like, a physical altercation that you're not going to be able to, like, hold your own in. I fear, like... I just fear, like like, the blood vessels in your body, like, all rupturing at the same time. Like, I feel like... You, I understand the, the I, I understand, but like also like when you hit the horn and then uh, if it was me and you hit the horn the first time, I'm going to try to figure out what's going on with my surroundings. Then you hit the horn the second time. Like, hey, fuckhead, I don't know why you're fucking beeping at me. Let me figure it out. And then you start the fucking machine gun racket. I'm going to go, oh, he wants me to turn right. My bad. But fuck you. Fuck you for being a dick fuck. Fuck you. I'm going to sit here till it turns green. And I'm just going to let you fucking boil inside. So I'm just saying, maybe if you could just dial it back a hair, you know, you might you might be getting in your own way, man. That's all I'm saying. Weren't, weren't you telling us a story about how you have this internal fucking talk with people doing the speed limit in the left lane, the people yeah. are in the right, like, that's their lane. That's their lane. That's the lane that they are comfortable yeah. in. Look at them go. You sure. are fucking, I hope you die. Absolutely, but we're not talking about me. We're talking about you. Okay. Yeah, because, fair enough. I'm, you, I'm on the hot seat. Yeah. And you also, um, you let it bother you like well past the event. I'm in the moment with this shit happening, and then once it's mm. once it's over, like I forget about it. It doesn't. It doesn't like I don't. I don't dwell on it for like hours, days, months, years. Don't pass before I'm like that motherfucker in the Subaru with that f- fucking security guard outfit on like I don't, I, don't, I don't harp on it emotionally and I feel like you mm. do that's the problem that's the difference yeah he's right <laughs> <laughs> all right maybe if maybe if I was dumber right Mur? yeah is that what we're doing yeah <laughs> I, just, I mean we wait say that for another time man but, but uh no I, Alan what? so I'll start with you here would life not be easier if you were dumber um, I mean, I get that. No. Dude. Okay. How I many? Dun- I, I think, I think, I, I mean, I know what you're getting at here, right? Like if I'm a certain level of dumb, I don't really know that life's bad. Uh, you know what I mean? But like, I also think, you know, I, I, I've, I like to think that my intelligence is part of the reason I've gotten to a certain place in life and the lifestyle that I enjoy. And you know what I mean? So maybe if I was not this level, I was less of, I was trying to find a diplomatic way to say this, uh, then then I wouldn't be as happy. Or man, I don't know, man. That's a, that's a great fucking question. I think you just <laughs> asked a philosophical fucking touch point here. <laughs> and Listen, we're the middle class holes. <laughs> I deal with dumb motherfuckers all day, every day. And the worst part about it is they're the most confident individuals you've ever met in your life. Yeah. If you go on TikTok or YouTube or Twitter or Facebook or wherever, and you start to see these more, the flat earthers, right? Yeah. Dumbest morons you've ever fucking come across. Yeah in the it's universe but god damn it if they aren't confident about their stupidity being the fucking right kind of stupidity and if you're that dumb you don't care that you're living in a fucking half a trailer in the middle of fucking nowhere you're just wildly content to beat up some guy because his fucking dog looked at you weird <laughs> it's touche man I can't argue I, you're what? right and they, 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 like they find that a lot of well not so much anymore because it's gotten not to say the mafia or mob doesn't exist but it's not necessarily as prevalent or as sound as it was in like the six, you know, 
leading up to the seventies and then obviously predating that, you know, when they made fucking hand over foot literally with, with, <laughs> uh, <laughs> with booze during prohibition. But, um, they're like, the, they, the ones that they, uh, study, a lot of them have IQs of like 80, 85. Okay. They say that that actually leads to them. <clears throat> they don't understand consequences, so they don't give a fuck. Exactly. They are the most confident individuals you've ever met. Anytime you see one of these women screaming at a McDonald's employee behind the counter because they forgot their cheese, they can't fucking answer some like, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. They're too dumb to recognize what kind of fucking asshole they are. It, the world around them, that just doesn't exist. They're in a bubble and a cocoon of their own fucking ignorance. And they're probably... I don't know. They're probably happier for it. I, I would assume I've got to walk around being miserable trying to figure out how compound interest works, <laughs> so I, so I can afford the things that I can that I want. They don't care, and the dumber they are, they'll just steal it. Because, like you said, they don't give a shit about the consequences. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll wait for him to study up, earn the money, buy it, and then I'll just take it from him. <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Yeah, one, 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 like a heist. It's, these are hard to argue points, man. man. Maybe we should be stupid. Maybe we should just, you know. It's too late, I, I guess. We've passed that point. We can't be. You, you do make a good point, though, about because I couldn't have gotten to where I am now without, you know, yeah. the the moderate level of intelligence that I have. I'm not going to call myself smart. Yeah. But, but the the wits and the, uh, yeah. chari- you know, I guess charisma and intelligence can be. Mutually exclusive. Emotional. You can be dumb and charismatic. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Yes. I work in construction. <laughs> 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 but, yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, that's good shit, man. I don't know. That's a great question. Can you stop asking questions that hard for the future episodes? <laughs> just... I, well, I mean, you know, it's the whole thing. It's like the the, the real philosophical, uh, like, what is it? Like, it's better to be a man in misery than a pig in shit. It's you know, like the pig's so dumb it doesn't realize it's wallowing in its own fucking turds. Yeah. And it's, but it's happy, man. It's happy. And I'm the one that's got to fucking worry about not getting pig shit on me. And I think about it far too often. Yeah. And I, 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 but I, but I deal with it. I'm trying to remember exactly where this came from. I had somebody asking me a question on the street the other day that had an obvious answer. And the obvious answer was must've gotten lost. Well, how would I find out if it did? I'm like, I don't know that you can. Like, where are we, where is this, tra- where are we losing the translation here? Had to do with a piece of mail. I sent a letter. Okay. They never got it. Okay. How can I find out where it is? I don't know. It's a piece of paper. It went through a giant system. The other person didn't receive it. Did it have a tracking number? No. Okay. Like, how would you find a piece of paper in the universe if it didn't have a fucking tracking device on it? I don't know. What's your fucking answer? Like, what? You, I, it was almost as if they wanted me to, like, satiate them with just some sort of, like, concrete response. But all I was doing was hypothesizing what could have happened, and none of those answers were working for them. I'm like, I should just lie to her. I should just completely and utterly lie to her. She just wants an answer. It doesn't have to be the right answer. She just needs one because she's too dumb to fucking deal with the fucking hypothesis that there's multiple outcomes to this scenario. Yeah, oh, man. It's yeah. Go ahead. The crux of the crux of conspiracy theorists, man. They like they like a juicy conspiracy. Mm-hmm. You, they, they don't want this dull story about the inner workings and the processes and the and the logistics of the United States Postal Service and how you know one in every X amount of pieces of mail get lost for no rhyme or reason. It could be here. It could be there. God, they want that uh, uh, fucking the the Hamburglar. <laughs> <laughs> on his way to fucking McDonald's, stopped and was like, fuck it, United States Postal Service. Hey, that, that, that sounds good to me. I like that. But I disagree. I think there's I think there's reasonably smart people up here that can understand that there's complexity in the world. Then I think there's conspiracy theorists underneath of it because they can actually they can actually kind of think about, ooh, there's multiple things that could have happened. And then I think there's the people who are conspiracy factors. They're the ones who come up with a this is what happened. No matter how ridiculous that is, this is what happened. I saw, I don't know if it was you going back and forth with somebody about um, uh, about the moon landing or not, but I think the question was asked to them, well, then how do you explain the other five moon landings? They're like, oh, there were six? Yeah, 
It wasn't just one. Oh, my bad. I thought there was only one they faked. <laughs> what? God damn it. Like, yeah, they you... faked the one to get funding for the other five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how they did it. Naturally. <laughs> like, and, and, and honestly, I'll be honest with you. That almost blew my mind that there are moon landing conspiracy theorists out there that are only basing their moon conspiracy on the Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins event, not realizing that there were five other instances of American astronauts stepping on the fucking lunar soil. Like, they've yeah. either disregarded it or they haven't thought that far. They haven't thought past the first one to explain the other five conspiracies that came beyond that. But that, again, that... that... A conspiracy. You don't have to uh, explain those types of things. But you know? just, just... <laughs> could you imagine being so dumb that you've already buttoned up <laughs> all of that <laughs> yeah, right. with no research or thought yeah. other than what you were kind of pondering in the shower one day? That's it. Yeah. That's what happened. Stanley Kubrick was on the set of The Shining and decided he was going to go into the back lot where he was going to find a desert and a couple of actors in some suits and just come up with this conspiracy and then sell it to the United States government. And then NASA was going to get all this funding Sounds to good. do God knows what. <laughs> to do God knows what. <laughs> we don't know what they spent it on. We have no idea. Nothing. It's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. 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 Has any, has it, no other, uh, no other country has been to the moon. Yeah. No, no other country has stepped foot. I'm trying to think. I feel like I want to say that yes. Means, did the Russians get up there? I don't think the Russians did. I think the and once we did, they were like, "Fuck it, they did it, they beat us to it, we're done." I'm pretty sure, dude. It was expensive as fuck. Like people don't understand. Like the reason we didn't go back is because like it just was expensive and it was nonsense. After a while, it was just like, okay, yeah. cool, we can do it. Why are we wasting money doing this? We can't take anything no else up there. Believe it or not, there's actually no natural resources up there that can benefit us. <laughs> At least not in like the nineteen seventies. Like we had no way to bring any of it back. So yeah. we just left it alone. And but I don't know. I, I don't know if any I don't think any other humans besides Americans have been to the moon. Hmm. Um, I don't I'm still like sifting through, but I think you're right. I think Americans are the only humans that have set foot on the moon. But Russia and China and have like, India, India, supposedly. And, oh, and India, yeah, have shot shit to it. To the, like, to land on it? Yeah, yeah. to the surface. Yeah, they shot, like, unmanned okay. spacecraft. Really? Okay. Well, there's that. And oh, it, uh, Japan and Israel and the European Space Agency have crashed things on the moon. <laughs> so there's that. You know, that kind of thing. See, that's that's more interesting to me. Yeah. What'd you, what'd you crash into the moon? <laughs> but see, but I think, Israel. <laughs> but I think the Japanese did it, like, on purpose, like, to, like, blow a crater up to see if there was, like, water under the surface. Oh, see, that's good. That's reasonable. Yeah? Huh. What'd they find? Water. Well, <laughs> found exactly what they were looking for. I guess I, water. Yeah. But... But anyway, I get anyway. I just, I, I just thought about how much easier my life would be if I was just a few IQ points uh, less. You know, the, a lot of more things would quote unquote make sense to me, whether they were right or wrong. You know, I wouldn't be, even be arguing with you about Kevin Costner uh, fighting Cal Ripken because it just would have happened, and there's nothing you would be able to say to me to deter that thought process. Yeah. So we got two more deathbed confessions, or one more. Well, anyway, yeah, you got. Stallone saying that he started the rumor about a gerbil getting stuck in Richard Gere's ass. And you got Ripken saying like, yeah, well, came home and Costner was playing Field of Dreams with Kelly on my on my uh, on my king spread. <laughs> so I thumped him. Who would be more apt I, to answer? I, he agreed to do the postman after I beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> who do you think would con who who do you think is more apt to confess if it happened or not? Or at least a skirmish. We don't even have to say that not, not, who won the fight. None of that. Like, did you and him like have a terse scenario occur uh, with, without mm. the public's knowledge? Yes or no? You mean between uh, Ripken and Costner? Yeah. 
probably right now it would be Costner because Ripken is a part of this ownership group that's now <clears throat> buying the Orioles. And I think he's trying to, you know, he doesn't want any hubbub or bad press or, you know, rumor mill stuff floating around now. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm. There's another you rumor I know that, of. Did you? I just found out recently. Uh, it's, it has to do with Sylvester Stallone. So apparently, like, you know, back in the, the late 80s, early 90s, when Stallone and Schwarzenegger were, like, going back and forth, apparently, like, if one turned the script down, like, they were each being offered, like, similar scripts, and they were, like, competing to see who would get the better script. And so Schwarzenegger got um, got a script, and it was complete shit, and he knew it, and he said, no, send it to, send it to Sly. Tell him I can't do it because I have another obligation. And so they sent Sylvester Stallone the script. He didn't read it. He just knew that Schwarzenegger couldn't do it. So he automatically signed up for Stop or My Mom Will Shoot. <laughs> wow. What, what, a, what a barn burner that was. <laughs> so, so Schwarzenegger wears that feather in his cap is the time he fucking tricks Sylvester Stallone into making the worst movie of his career. <sighs> um, okay. Real quick, if you, if you are dumber, all right, than you are in your current state right now, does that mean you would spend money to purchase and consume uh, hot wing sauce hot seltzers? They're going to hit the market here in the next couple, uh, actually by the Super Bowl. Yeah, this is a one-off, uh, truly hard seltzer just in time for your Super Bowl festivities. It sounds awful, but I'm coming back to it maybe being like a like like a mixer for something. Yeah, no, like a, I don't know. Maybe you water down your fucking, uh, what you call it, Bloody Mary with it, or... Okay. Okay. It's, a, it's like a, a, a bloody... Yeah, that's... I mean, that's about one of one. <laughs> carbonated. <laughs> what a carbonated... Mm, who would like a carbonated hot sauce tomato-based drink? Anyone? Anyone? Mm. Yeah. That sounds fucking terrible. God, this is they, they just they get too cute with this stuff. I get it. You're, I mean, look, we were talking about this earlier. Hormel did the chili cheese keg thing. I'm like, bravo, yeah, but hell that's yeah, awesome. You know, you get a you get a keg of chili cheese that's delivered to you, and you can have your friends over for a variety of whatever you want to do. Christ, you can wheeze the juice with it, <laughs> put your mouth under it, and Encino man that to, till your every taste bud and crevice of your mouth is burnt to smithereens. <laughs> But this, I just, I don't get. I, were, Alan, you, you have a good idea of what happens in war rooms of companies like this. Where did, what the fuck was like, yeah, hot wing sauce. Uh, Let's do it. <laughs> they were just like, you know what? Fucking money, man. Do you, like, with the, also, the generation we're talking about that they're probably marketing to here eats, like, fucking hot Cheetos and fucking, like, you know what I mean? Like, like for breakfast. Like. <laughs> It's it's kind of gross. Uh, <laughs> fucking, you know, like you sprinkle fucking takis on fucking everything. It's, it's just it's they're weird people, and I think you know you got to play to your strengths. If I'm in the war room, like you said, fire it up. Let's let's pour some fucking crystal in that fucking truly and see what we got on our hands. <laughs> I, look, I know the real answer behind this, and you would I would come up with this. Idea. Uh, how about how about hot wings, truly hard seltzer, and then Wes, you're the fucking CEO, and you're gonna tell me what? <laughs> I'm the CEO of Truly. I guess Truly's a subsidiary or something, but yeah, well, Truly's uh, that that's ooh. the name of the seltzer company. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hot hot wings, oh, chili. Wow, interesting. Uh, doesn't sound appetizing to me. Why did you guys think that that would be appetizing to the general public? Well, I don't think anybody's actually going to drink it, but I think every fucking shlomo dumbass fucking podcast and radio show in the country is going to mention our brand name right before the Super Bowl and remind everybody that our hard seltzers are on the market. And if we make a small batch where we lose a little bit of money, we're going to gain millions of dollars in free advertising telling us how stupid we are for coming up with a dumbass beverage that no one's going to drink. Mm. So awesome. you have thought about this. <laughs> People are going to buy it just to try it, and that's enough. Yeah. They'll probably... It, okay, and this is the thing, too, is Truly doesn't even need to have the consumer buy it from the liquor store. 
They just need to have the liquor stores put it in stock for people to come either gawk at it and buy a couple of this. Like the liquor stores are going to be the ones taking the loss on it, but they're going to be forced to kind of have it in stock because people are going to want to know if they can go fucking buy it at their local fucking liquor store. I'm going to be headed up to Rick's to see if they got it. If they got it and they got a four pack, I'll buy it and I'll drink it on the show for you guys. And then I'll puke into this fucking bucket next to me. Interesting. Gross. Have it with a side of ranch. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Actually, they said someone tweeted that in the writers of this. It's food and wine said that they're reasonably convinced that they came from Jason Kelsey's burner account, which is kind of cute. I thought. <laughs> oh, I thought so, dude. Did you see the? J- I sent you guys the Jason Kelsey uh, Funko Pop fucking doll, right? The shirtless. Oh yeah, Jason yeah, Kelsey? yeah, 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 yeah. Now that's a beautiful one off right there. Like, I mean, he he was in mid fucking like just drunk roar at a Bills game with yeah. his shirt off in a stadium that's not it has no affiliation with the Eagles really or the Chiefs besides they're playing them at that time. Recently, like debating whether to retire or not, and just goes into just a full like just war roar mode. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And they 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 made a doll from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, you got your Buffalo wing sauce trulies and you got your Jason Kelsey <laughs> gladiator <laughs> roar shirtless. I mean, we live in wild times. I wish I were dumber. I wish. Because <laughs> if I were, I'd buy both of them. <laughs> I, dr- I drink my I drink my hot wings truly while staring at my Jason Kelsey Funko Pop. <laughs> <laughs> I take pictures and, and show it to my friends. Like, look how, look at this. This is so awesome. <laughs> glug, 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 glug. Uh uh, last little bit before we get to Fun Fact Friday. You guys, I'm, I've am i I've never stepped foot in a Costco. Oh, what? Really? Yeah, nope. me either. I've never, I've been, I've, I can't, I got, now I'm lying. I've been in a Costco, but I've never, like, actively shopped at a Costco. I don't want to pay for the subscription, man. I mean, I get it. I hear people who have, like, the subscription yeah. are, like, always in awe and wonder of their Costco, but... I don't know where one is close to me. It's not worth the drive. Well, do you have like a BJ's or Sam's Club? Sam's Club, Club, yeah. No. I was just asking. I don't know what you people do up there. No, there's one in Bel Air. Bel Air? 40 minutes from me? Yeah, yeah. Stock up. Take that Tesla out there. Fill the trunk up. (laughs) Fill the frunk up. (laughs) Fill the frunk up. (laughs) So... Uh, I guess this is like goes to show you what I do and don't know about what you can and can't purchase at Costco. Uh, uh, woman, she bought a couch. Literally everything. Okay, two years later, it gets a full refund. Yep. Uh, low wages and high wages for workers at Costco. Lover, Costco lovers have something else that keeps them coming back to the store. Uh, generous return policy. So yeah. Two years of your use earlier this year. Uh, another user documented returning a Christmas tree after the holiday season. Um, employees themselves have gotten under this trend, making videos of showing them returning things to Costco with ease. But this one takes the cake. Yeah, two years of use. Um, doesn't show a whole lot of wear and tear, but at least enough to where you could be like, yeah, two years of asses, and farts, and change, and God knows what else. Your kid, your pets. Truly hard like, yep, yep. Yeah, truly hard It's like, yep, ship shape, cool, full refund, no worries. Like, come on, man. Is this, are you making that much money to where... Yes. It's like, what are you going to do with that then? Sell it to a fucking pawn shop? No, you're probably just going to incinerate it and get some sort of insurance money back for it. Or you're going to get a positive news story out of it. And people like myself are going to really think about driving 45 minutes to an hour to go to a Costco. (laughs) Because apparently there's no fucking repercussions for making a bad purchase. I, I just, I like the story because it shows that there are still some companies out there that are willing to treat the customers with like, Almost the utmost respect, like maybe even too far beyond. But I hate it because I feel like it's going to ruin return policies for everybody else. Because there's that one ass, like you two fuckers, when you're talking about the uh, the Alaska Airlines and like, uh, is $1,500 really enough for, you know, for that little incident? Like where I'm like, yeah, yes, yes, it is. And then they're going to be like, nope, no more. We're going to give you fucking like uh, sky bucks from now on. I feel like Costco is now going to have to go through and change their return policy. Yeah. Well, you shouldn't be able to return a couch used for two years for a hundred percent of the sale value. I agree with you. Costco, you're telling me I'm tarnishing like 
customer service or something. I'm saying this lady is. This lady who's returned the couch. Like, she's going to tarnish customer service policies for everything else. Because Costco's now going to have to really, now this is a national news story, they're really mm-hmm. going to have to go through their bylines and be like, okay, what are we willing to accept here? I mean, can someone, like, eat a whole bag of Cheetos and puke them back into the bag and then bring the bag back for a full refund? Like, how are we working this? Can they shit in the bag and say these are no longer tasty? Well, dude, that's their whole thing is that it's not... Like, there is no firm thing. It's at their discretion. So they could have told her no. Hmm. But it doesn't well, matter said, to them. Like, uh, the, I don't care. The, 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 store, uh, the store clerk or whatever said... Um, uh, which it is his quote, uh, you can return it if you don't like it anymore. Yep. The person from Costco to her, to yeah. the previous customer. That's how Costco be rolling, man. Fucking, so I used to sell cell phones in a Costco ages ago. And like, I technically wasn't a Costco employee. I was an employee of some other little company that sells cell phones out of the kiosk. But I would talk to all the, the fucking Costco employees and mingle with them and chit chat with them and yeah like they treat their fucking employees good like i was just casually looking at that story and saw another story about how a costco in norfolk their their people were like we're joining the fucking teamsters union you guys suck and the ceo of costco was like we're not even mad at you guys we're disappointed in ourselves as leaders because we made we made you unionize dude costco is fucking great they also pay regular costco workers like 30 fucking dollars an hour why am I working? Why am I doing what I do? Yeah, I don't know, dude. <laughs> if that's a comparable, you should definitely apply at Costco. Man, maybe I am uh, dumber I'm than pretty, I thought. I'm fairly certain they still get pensions. Um, Like, yeah, Costco's the fucking shit, bro. And we have Costco memberships. I got gas at Costco today. Definitely fucking cheaper than you, you jokers. Fucking, like, it totally worth The gas itself is worth the $50 for the fucking, for the fucking gas. Or for the membership. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not doubting that the membership is worth it. I, I, yeah. What I've read about Costco and people who live in the city, like myself, is it's sometimes not... It's just not convenient. The most kind of... Because you, 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 storage is of, you know, you know, uh, you know, of the essence living in a row home here in the city. Yeah, you so, guys got a lot going on over there. We had storage in my row home, and we used to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I... <laughs> All I know is the only thing that makes me kind of contemplate getting a Costco fucking card is my uh, sister-in-law got a cake for my dad like two years ago, and she usually make, bakes her own, bakes all the cakes for the birthday parties. Mm-hmm. It's like, sorry, I didn't have time. I had to pick this cake up from Costco. It was the most goddamn delicious fucking cake oh, I've ever those had in my are life. Fucking incredible. I it, it, like second to I I don't think I've ever had like a, a bakery cake like like you know, boutique bakery, like Mm -hmm. this is what we do that tasted anywhere close to how goddamn chocolatey delicious this Costco cake was. Oh, you had a chocolate one? You should get the fucking white one too. Whew, boy. It's it's a problem. (laughs) While you were eating while you were eating it, did you have to lie to her about how her cakes were better? Like, "Mm, I mean this is good, but yours are better. No, no, like this is the best goddamn cake I've ever put in my mouth. Now if people like who know Costco cake are around it, they're like, Oh yeah, that's the shit. Get that eat that. Get yourself a piece of that. That's good stuff. You should finish it and then return the the, you know, the the display the the what what do they come served on? I don't know. Like a plastic Yeah, like a platter. Yeah. Yeah, you just return good. that and be like, we didn't like it. We want a full refund. <laughs> the, the you and Sarah can come with me and Kelly to Costco one weekend. You can experience the magic. All right. You can eat like I a can... whole fucking meal <laughs> while walking around, like just eating some samples, mad samples, all the fucking yeah. samples. So good. You can double dip. Can we... Now, here's the deal. I don't care. <laughs> As a child, we used to, my parents used to went go to a place which I, it's, it's it did that place didn't turn into Costco, but whatever that place was, the idea of that then became Costco. So I understand, yeah, the end of every aisle, samples, all that stuff. We used to get I used to love it was like four or five packs of kudos bars in a single box. Mm-hmm. My parents were like, All right, what do you want? Just get it. Just fucking throw in the cart. And the wow. cart's like a flatbed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. It's like you gotta buy obscene amounts of like stuff, but it's kind of okay. Like we get like we get all of our toilet paper and paper towels there. Kirkland okay. toilet paper, top notch. Fucking 
Paper towels? I mean, whatever. Paper towels. I use, I don't. Let me ask you something. This is going to sidetrack us real quick. Did you guys grow up in households where, like, your parents treated paper towels like they were fucking, like, gold? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My parents, so, here's the problem. My mom will bring one out and dry that bitch. And like, <laughs> and I'm like, bro, <laughs> we are in America now. <laughs> here's the thing. My my dad still treats paper towels like they are made from United States currency. And he gets like the cheapest one ply. And he will, so he will, yes, ball it up in his fist and squeeze out all the moisture and then flatten it out on his fucking marble countertop and fucking wait for it to dry to use it again. Oh, that's a that's a dish towel now. Like it's not a dish towel. No, it's it's a wet piece of paper. It's trash. Now. Yeah, it's trash now. It's garbage. Well, that's why I, he has marble countertops still. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> and that's why I won't. <laughs> Uh, yeah, shit. I don't know if my, my parents were ever Nazis about toilet or not, to, not to, excuse me, paper towels, but they certainly like there was a differentiation between paper towels and napkins, mm-hmm. and so much so like so my mom hasn't spent a lot of time here, but she did come down mid COVID when uh, they were they did like an air show downtown mm-hmm. just to like like get everyone out the door. We're gonna you know some entertainment, get give her, get some blood pumping. My mom was like, fuck it, I'll come down. I assume, you know, if you guys get tested, no one has COVID, I'll come down. She was kind of deterred by the fact that we didn't have napkins. We were using paper towels as napkins. She was like, you don't have any napkins? I was like, yeah, that's what paper towels are for. She's like, oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I raised you better. It's one of those, <laughs> those, one of those white households. You got that, yeah, yeah. Them paper towels. It's wild. That's, that's what we do too. I take a paper towel and I don't and I I I tear it. Actually, I tear it in half and then I tear the half in half and that's our ta- that's our napkins for dinner. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Nah. Just me as good. And, me and Kelly grab like three or four fucking paper towels at a time, fucking to just fucking use them as as needed. Okay, like he I listen. I I got there's still some of that DNA in me and I don't reuse them. Yeah, and I use yeah. them willingly, but I will spare them the best I can. But I, I do use a lot of yeah, nah, we and me, it's me and Kelly too. We're obscene with it, <laughs> so it is what it is. Yeah, the only thing I, I accumulate like a, a small batch when I'm cooking because I'll like rip some off and <clears throat> I wipe my hands and wipe something. Yeah, and if I haven't like if I haven't ruined it with you know cleaning up a lot, I'll then wet that big batch and then use that to clean up hmm. you know what i mean that's not bad. um that's his kind of kind of my thing but then and then follow it up with one of those like clorox uh wipes to kind of sanitize everything um i i didn't i didn't learn that anywhere i think it's just my own laziness yeah it's, that's reasonable you see my dad yeah. thinks that the clorox wipes are a waste because he's like well, if you got the <laughs> bottle and you got the paper towel why do you need the wipe you save the paper towel from when you wash your hands and you dry them off. You let it dry a little bit on the countertop. You spray it with the spray bottle, and then you use the same one to wipe up. What are you doing? I swear to God, that guy gets like three fucking uses out of one fucking paper towel. It's, I feel like that's like a microcosm of like... Why the boomers, boomers generation? Why, why, why boomers are miserable. Just miserable <laughs> folk. Like, that's just how that's how their brains work, and that's how they live. And you're just like, ugh. Listen, did you hear yourself say how hard that was? Like, you could have just fucking used a fucking Clorox wipe. <laughs> yeah. So they're, they're so convenient. It's Clorox they're so amazing. with extra steps. Like, it's fucking yeah. brutal. <laughs> I'll, I'll occasionally take four Clorox wipes, put them stack two at a time, and put them underneath my feet yeah, and yes. mop the floor. Yeah. Mop the floor. 100%. <laughs> look, I th- look, that's what I do all the time. The, the Clorox <laughs> company took care of engineering of fucking pre-Cloroxed paper towel for you. Just use it. They put, I'm sure, hours of research and development into that. They have scented versions. Just use it. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to... to, to, to. God, I'm still wrapping my head around your dad's fucking just recycling purposes of Holy paper shit, towels. Yeah. Just, oh, God. Dude, their house is at fucking 68 degrees maximum. One ply reusable paper towels. I mean, it's just like, wow, man. You guys got all this money. And I guess it's because you don't spend any of it. Well done. However, they are on fucking 
vacation, all expense paid fucking trip to fucking Jamaica right now. So who am I to who am I to judge? Hey, we should talk about that after this, actually. <laughs> Jamaica, Jamaica. That's yeah, but right. you know what? I'm and I'm not I'm not saying they're not enjoying themselves, but I know they're not enjoying themselves the way I would enjoy myself, especially considering it's like like yesterday was Bob Marley's birthday and all that, and I'm just like it's, it's wasted on you. Why are you there and I'm not? <laughs> Yeah. You guys gonna go see the movie? Because they recycled paper towels for forty years. And now they right. go to fucking Jamaica. You are hundred percent right. correct. No, I'm gonna wait for that to come out on a streaming service. Fair enough. Fair enough. That was kind of like a tweener one. Um, I'm, I the the Bob Marley movie uh, it's coming out next. So it's coming out on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Uh, I just I don't know. It it it, it seemed. Well, I I don't get. I don't get floored by a lot of previews, but I've seen that, and I'm like, man, you know, I Looks Christ, really I good. think like anyone our age just had that, that you know, that Bob Marley's greatest hits. Someone, someone owned it or was in your car at some point in time, whether it was yours or not. I own like fucking like, three different copies of it. Uh, different yeah, times. right. Yeah. Oh, got a hook on. Oh. Technical difficulties. No, just my my, my big toe uh, clipped the. Uh, yeah. Clip the cord there. Well, on that note, let's get smart. Let's, we're going to go from dumb to smart after Murr's Fun Fact Friday. All right. Let's expand our minds here with your true facts that sound like bullshit. It's officially time for your Fun Fact Friday brought to you by our friend over on Instagram. Find him yourself. It is Cuckster for life. That's Cuckster, the number four life. What's the Cuckster been up to uh, lately there, Wesley? Well, and it... it Interesting you ask that because I was texted by a few friends of ours uh, who follow the Cuckster at on Instagram. Love his content. But his most recent uh, post, he was curious about whether or not uh, if he's not in the bedroom and his wife is partaking in a gangbang, is it considered a cuck? Mm. All right. No. Or is his wife just a filthy whore? And they were like, I just... I feel bad for the Cuckster right now. You know, he's 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 uh, he's in flux. He's in he's in this weird cuck purgatory. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a cuck, man. I mean, that's like that's the whole tree falling in a woods thing. And if the that's tree right. falls in your wife, and you're not there. I think that's called cheating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Cuck, you'll, Cuckster, you'll figure it out, buddy. Just keep your ear to the grindstone and your. Self in the corner. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but check out the Cuckster, Cuckster for Life on Instagram. Let's get to it. Five fun facts for you fuckers on a Friday. Did you know every planet in the solar system could fit in the space between Earth and the moon? That's even if you include Pluto. Damn. I thought Jupiter was like, I thought Jupiter was so big it would take up that space. Yeah, hey, couple that yeah. with Saturn. Jupiter is of... large enough to fit all of the other planets on it, though. I know, but you would. I just doesn't seem like the moon is that far away. And right. if it doesn't seem like it's that far away, it seems like the other planets would be that much bigger. But that's um, that's a wild fact. You figured like like if you said okay, we could get two thirds of the planets. I mean, we do your Mars, your Venus, your Mercury. If you net, you know Neptune, but once you start getting into the Jupiter and Saturn, then I'd kind of start being like, mm, "You sure? I mean, that's a lot of, that's a lot that's of surface lot area." Of Earth, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I seriously thought because I mean you can because because could... those planets are flat too. I mean, it's a lot of surface area. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, because what you can fit like a hundred Earths inside Jupiter. It just doesn't even seem like there's a yeah. like hundred Earth spaces between us and the Moon, and that's yeah. one planet. What, what the mileage is. Or kilometers. I think the, you know, I think the moon's like 250-some thousand miles. I'd say 268 uh, was, was what was in my mind. I don't know if that's uh, hundo percent accurate. Alan, we got a fact check on this? I'm, 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 I'm kind of checking it out now. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. That's still an interesting fact. I like the, that you had to, even if you include Pluto, oh, this fucking thing that's the size of what... Mercury, maybe. I know, but you're talking about jamming eight planets in between, like us and like another body that looks fucking huge. I don't know. It just it it it, it just shows you how skewed your mind is when it comes to like grasping the concept of the vastness of space and time and everything else that comes with with that. Like yeah, like I mean, I was watching a video the other day 
and it was showing uh, it was showing you exactly like where you are in the solar system, and then it was showing you where the solar system is in comparison to other other galaxies in our neighborhood, and then it was showing you that there's a whole nother, and it just kept going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger to like to where like the the known universe is forty seven point eight billion light years mm -hmm. across, and they're like, oh my god. We don't know yeah. shit about shit. There's and we like, act like we know shit about shit all the time. Yeah. There's like a wild YouTube video about like, I think it's like two hours long, literally, of just like zooming out from Earth. It's kind of fucking wild. But uh, <laughs> I digress. Um, Jupiter, uh, its diameter is 88,000 miles. 88,695. So that's di that's straight across for our, mm. we'll forget our geometry uh, of, of, fucking round surfaces which clearly jupiter is not so i apologize these are probably <laughs> skewed numbers the distance from earth to the moon is 238,855 miles so yeah jupiter will fit between it a couple times so alan you or Mur, you win prices right rolls mm -hmm. so okay um Thank you. and to go so a little other little facts uh jupiter 88,695 is more than 11 times the diameter of earth its volume is over 1,300 times the volume of Earth, and uh, 1,300 Earths could fit inside of it. 1,300? 1,300 Earths could fit inside of Jupiter. Wow, I thought it was only like 100. No, I was going to say, I think like I think like 100 Earths fit in the red spot of Jupiter. That's okay. Fucking... You get what I'm saying? Yeah, the G spot. Yeah. The, the J spot. We are so insignificant. <laughs> you know. It's so fucking. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. God. There was also a good. There, there yeah. was a good. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was on someone's podcast. Someone, I think he was like a, a common Joe, but but had some wherewithal of 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 what he was talking about. You know, it wasn't going tit for tat with deGrasse Tyson, but they were talking about asteroid fields as it pertained to Star Wars, right? Yeah, you know, like you know, they're. they're uh, the Millennium Falcon is trying to lose uh, one of the Star Destroyers in a <clears throat> in an asteroid field, and there is an asteroid field uh, in in the, in the Milky Way. And if you like compare that, most like asteroids are like sixty eight thousand miles apart. Like, oh, and then he's joking around about like, oh, we're in an asteroid field. What do we do? Like, nothing. Just keep going forward. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> this is where Neil deGrasse Tyson pisses me off is because he's like he gets on his high horse about that kind of shit. And I'm like, oh, but we're talking about in a galaxy far, far away where there's just something that may be something anomalous that you've never come across because you live here. Mm. You fucking pompous turd. He does that shit all the time now. And it's uh, and I've I've been a I've been a Neil deGrasse Tyson apologist for a long time. But he's apologist. really Starting to chat my ass. <laughs> what did he do? I was not paying attention. I was he like he it. just he he starts spitting out facts, but he spits out like oh oh well that was stupid because if you look at an asteroid field, asteroids are so far apart that it wouldn't matter. Ha ha ha! I would just fly straight like I would, it wasn't there. And I and it's like yeah, but maybe this is just a, a you know an anomalous thing that is occurring in this world, a galaxy far far away. That you've never fucking seen before. Yeah. Dickhead. That's fair. That's, I'll give you that one. It's just like Joe That's Rogan with his fucking hating on Star Trek because they have communicators and not cell phones. It's like, why would you have a cell phone satellite uh, a, a warp away? Like, it's, yeah. it's a static fucking... Oh, it gets my blood boiling. Um. <laughs> oh, here's some more Jupiter facts for you, bud. Uh... <laughs> The Great Red Spot is 10,159 miles wide, which is 1.3 times the width of Earth. No, so only an Earth. Only an Earth in a little One, wiggle room. 1.3 Earths can fit in the Red Spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, if you want to get really, uh, would have worked back in the day, but if you really wanted to, like, uh, you know, throw an insult to a whore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, yeah, your vagina is like the Red Spot on Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> You old hot dog in a hallway. I got you. <laughs> a hot dog in a hallway. That's right. Well, speaking of Star Wars, did you know, even though everyone knows what the fuzzy little bears are called, the word Ewok never appears in Return of the Jedi? Hmm. They never refer to them as Ewoks. They never say, you know, that's, yeah, huh? Isn't that, wow. that 
that kind of blows my mind because this kind of comes back to that whole like rumor thing we were talking about earlier. How did we know they were called Ewoks? Where did that come from? Um, Maybe like that. Well, I'm fairly certain my man wrote a bunch of shit. Like, yeah, I know, but like, I, I felt like watching the movie. Like, my brother's like, yeah, those are the Ewoks. Like, we didn't know about the books. We didn't read in this house. What the fuck? Where did that come the, from? It was in the end credits as well, apparently. Hmm. Hmm. What they like but, named like Wicket the Ewok, Wicket Ewok. What it was? Yeah, they probably were like Ewok with the fucking do rag, Ewok with the fucking spear, Ewok that you know got punched. You know what I'm saying? Like how they do with other shit. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? <clears throat> like fucking. And then they do that in Wizard of Oz. They were like you know fucking the little little person that got fucking. Kicked in the woods and shit. I guarantee in 1939 they didn't call them little people. Yeah, they called them munchkins. That's it. Munchkin <laughs> one, munchkin two, munchkin fucking 87. You know what I mean? They just number them. Same same thing. Ewok. Ewok eight. Okay. Right. All right. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna have to look that shit up. How did we know they were called Ewoks? Yeah, and if if and uh, some if, nerd was like the. the Ewoks. If if Chewak uh, to ch- ch- if Chewy Chewy procreated with one of the Ewoks, oh. you know what? Then what was created? A bloody mess on the floor. <laughs> it's a, a dead Ewok, <laughs> a dead a dead female Ewok. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a five five and a half footer. You know? <laughs> uh, yes, me the me version of Ewok. <laughs> Did you know, according to legend, hard-rocking band Alice Cooper chose their name after using a Ouija board to communicate with a spirit named Alice Cooper. The band had disputed this over years, but the rumor appeared to originate with frontman Vincent... Oh, Jesus. Fernier himself. I mean, so... Why? But it th- th- still doesn't... How did they know? W- were they talking to the thing of, what's your name? And it said Alice Cooper? Is that how that happened? Well, it sounds like a lot of acid. Um, I mean, I don't mean to burst your bubble here, but yeah. AliceCooper.com says that shit's not true. Well, it says it's been disputed. I mean, you're not wrong. Oh, but that, I didn't catch that part my bad. Uh, yeah. that, that's all I got. Why don't we move on to the next fucking fun fact? <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> well, there's a thing that's not true. That's in the true it's book the of true bullshit. It might be true. Okay. Yeah. That's that folklore stuff, you know? That's what we talked about. Like, Did you know that Alice Cooper's band was because of Ouija board? Okay, oh, well, yeah. all right. Let's try to save some face here. So Alice Cooper, they they knew they weren't that good a band, so they said they were, and there was all those, like, purity laws out there. Like, um, oh, shit. Who was the guy? Uh, uh, oh, who was the guy, the, the first stand-up comedian that kept getting himself arrested? Uh Lenny Bruce, Lenny Bruce, Lenny Bruce and like George Carlin, those guys were getting arrested for like, you know, like purity laws and shit like that. And so they thought if we can get ourselves arrested, we'll make a big name for ourselves. So they said they were going to perform completely naked. And so they wore like clear raincoats on stage, Mm -hmm. but they had worked up such a sweat in the back (laughs) that their raincoats actually steamed up. (laughs) <laughs> so they, they were naked you couldn't see anything so the cops came and never arrested them because they weren't they weren't they weren't nothing was showing yeah Ste- steamed up rain cuts that would have been a better name than alice cooper <laughs> <laughs> do you think wayne and garth would still would have said we're not worthy to the steamed up rain coats? oh yeah that's right. Okay. He probably would have drawn on them. That'd have been kind of funny. <laughs> drawn the S. <laughs> yes. Did you know in the movie Home Alone, the picture of Buzz's girlfriend that Kevin finds is actually a boy in a wig? The director thought it would be mean to use a picture of an actual girl as an ugly gag and wisely decided to go a different route. Unless <laughs> you fast forwarded 30 years and then it's probably a problem again. I did not know that, but that. Buzz, your girlfriend, Wolf. Yeah, that uh, that's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Now I'm going to have yeah. to go fucking find that scene so I can see the kid in the fucking wig. Yeah. Who, who's it, does, does Kevin say it? Does Kevin say, Buzz, your girlfriend, Wolf, or is it someone else in the family? No, it, it's Kevin when he like he's going through Buzz's like, you know, big 
box of tricks. Oh, and he's yeah, like, yeah, finds yeah. It, Ooh, Buzz, your girlfriend. <laughs> Oof. And then throws it away. <laughs> hey. Yeah. No, that's that's funny. It wasn't that that was written by uh, John Hughes. Hughes yeah. It wasn't directed. Correct. It wasn't directed. Correct. Yeah, okay. Um yeah. and they said it was pretty good. Obviously, it was home alone, but then um John Hughes was like, ah, it's just not working. Something's not working. And he called up John Williams and he's like, could you write a song for this movie? And John Williams was like, yep, sure can. And you got that fucking soundtrack. And he said, as soon as they applied that soundtrack, it hits you right in the fucking cockles. And it was like, boom, mm-hmm. this is a movie now. That's right. Throwing, throwing, throwing a cameo from John Candy. Voila. He did that the all. The Kenosha Kickers. <laughs> he did that all in like a, like, that was just one day on set. Yeah. And free. And no fucking script. And yeah. I'll search. Yeah. Did, 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 it, did it on the arm. God, that's awesome. And finally, did you know the effects used to recreate missile launchers in Top Gun were so realistic that the Navy launched an investigation to determine whether real missiles had actually been launched? The Navy actually authorized the use of two missiles, but the recreations put together by the movie's special effects teams were so realistic that it caused suspicion that allotted, um, you know, them to go take a look-see. That's this is, the, this is the original? Yeah. Damn. Dude, if you're the special mm. effects guy, like, you, yeah. you're just walking around fucking chest out, fucking wearing some of those fucking ripped up jean shorts from the volleyball scene. Like, yeah, look at me. Look at me. So, <laughs> just What's carrying that? around, a, carrying around a boombox playing Kenny Loggins. Yes. <laughs> the worst part about that is that song is called "Playing with the Boys." That's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> I also got to think. Boys. Oh, sorry, I, I'm I'm assuming that all things ended well, but. <clears throat> In terms of invest- investigations, you don't want to be under the crosshairs, literally, of Uncle Sam. Mm-mm. Otherwise, or the U.S. Navy. No, you know what I mean. Certain like uh, <clears throat> protocols and things. I mean, that's where they they chuck you in a dark room, and your fucking rights are, you know, null and void. You have no rights. God, yeah, I do wonder how many times they ask the question. So, where'd you get the missiles? That, mm-hmm. They're special effects. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, they look really good. So. Where'd you get the missiles? <laughs> like, I wonder how long that went on. You ever, been, you ever been waterboarded? You ever been waterboarded? I'm not talking about some sort of surfing thing you guys are doing in L.A. <laughs> True, and there, it was a different time, too, so you probably, it probably wasn't even, a, it was probably the standard protocol. Get the board, yeah. get the bucket. <laughs> yeah. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my friends, is your Fun Fact Friday. Mm. Tonight on Before You Go... We introduce to you February's Middle Class Holes Badass of the Month. Takes place uh, out of Brazil, 21-year-old man. And that, you know, uh, I think paints a little bit of a picture of, of, of what, how the events unfolded. But uh, he's partying on New Year's Eve um, <clears throat> on the beaches of uh, like Rio de Janeiro or something like that. Yeah, Rio de Janeiro. So it goes, um, 21-year-old Brazilian man was stunned after finding a bullet lodged in his head after thinking he was hit by a stone. During a New Year's Eve party, according to New York Post, uh, Matias Facio was partying in the beach of Rio de Janeiro when he felt an object hit him. He shrugged it. Uh, he shrugged it when his head stopped bleeding. <laughs> shrugged it. Didn't say shrugged it off. Uh, and then for the next four days, continued to party. Um, his friends didn't have the faintest idea what happened. Uh, little did I know this would happen. The 21-year-old recalled, recalled per the Post. Uh, I thought it was a stone, a bad joke. Someone had picked it up and threw a rock. Uh, if there was a noise, I could imagine what it could be, but I didn't hear anything. It was completely normal. Um, he said after four days of partying, when I went to take a nap, woke up, my arm, uh, was feeling a little bit silly. My fingers were moving, but I wasn't doing it. Uh, but I didn't have the confidence to pick something like I didn't have the confidence to actually go to the hospital. So he went to the hospital on like the account of his friends. Lo and behold, yeah, a bullet lodged in his head and he partied for four days. So I know, listen. Folks, if you're ever in the area of the greater Cecil County and you find yourself at a Land Hope Farms, don't try the chicken pot pie soup. Don't eat that because it induced me into a gut wrenching, uh, <clears throat> the opposite of the euphoria, whatever the hell that is. And I couldn't hang out the rendezvous in for a night. Uh, I wasn't shot in the head. 
with a firearm and I didn't party for four more days. I don't think I've partied for four days straight. Well, wow. maybe once in life. Um, but uh, your thoughts on February's middle class all of the month, um, middle well, class all of the month. I, I to quote uh, the late uh, great uh, singer oh, he, Rick James. Uh, cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a feeling uh. there were some enhancements going on here. Um, that's, um, yeah, that's, uh, that, that's, that's dedication to the cause, man. Well done, sir. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's think it's, it's fucking impressive. I'm trying to think. So they, they had some, um, I'm no expert on this stuff, but the getting shot in the head is a pretty high death percentage no shit is by the way this is the the author via barstool so the batting average has to be pretty close to a thousand but adrenaline's a hell of a drug adrenaline and cocaine when you mix those two uh get something away but the party must go on at least in the minds of the 21 year old student who had a bullet lodged in his head and lived to tell the tale okay but yeah I mean, it, it's okay obviously it was in there enough to be pushing on something otherwise you wouldn't have like this like you know, sensory damage, if you will, like fingers moving involuntarily. And what do you, what else did he say was going on? He said that, well, it was, that was the, cause he woke up and took a nap and then his fingers were kind of involuntarily moving. That's what woke him up. That's what woke him up after four yeah. days of partying. That's, I mean, yeah. look, man, I mean, that's a story you're going to tell for a lifetime that you're lucky to be living. <laughs> I, and Jesus Christ, man, like the fact that you're just randomly out and about, this is your vacation. And you fucking, one, there's two problems here. And this is why I think drugs were heavily involved. Because if I got hit in the head with a rock, I wouldn't be like, oh, just a rock to the side of fucking head. I'll wait till it stops <laughs> bleeding and then let's go to the bar. Let alone, you know what I mean? Like, right, like right. that would be concerning enough. I guess in a way, he's almost lucky it was a bullet that was able to like, gently pierce his skull so he could just continue to move about his day instead of blunt force drama. Mm, mm. I just like the other thing too, at the, you know, the New Year's Eve wasn't enough. It had to be New Year's Day, January 2nd and January 3rd just to keep, keep this sucker rolling. You know, he's 21. He's a student. He's all, he's out of school, but you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> Bullet or not, that's a lot of partying. And I could certainly say after like four days and your fingers are involuntary moving, you're like, yeah, I'm dehydrated. Let me get a banana. Let's get some chicken noodle soup. I think the the most badass thing, quote unquote, that I ever did uh, as far as partying was concerned is I, I woke up one day. I had not completed, I had not completed like a big project, big project for one of my uh, classes, my English classes. It was like a 10 page paper. I think I got, I think I made it to eight. And I just ran out of gas, and I was like, fuck, man. I'm not going to make it to this 11 a.m. class with this. And I actually called your brother, Wes, and I was like, what should I do? He's like, mm, start drinking. I drank an entire bottle of Jack Daniels between 11 a.m. and, like, 3 p.m. Fucking shit housed. I was waving the bottle at people. Ended up, like, shattering it in my own hand and then waving it around even more at people, which is violent and dangerous. And then I laid on my face until about 7 o'clock, and then Jimbo comes up and is like, dude, you come to this party or what? I was like, Bruh, let's go. I went, I had one beer, and I was like, I can't be here. I am fucking wrecked. And I stumbled home and just went right back to bed. Nice. Did you finish the paper? Um, actually, this, <laughs> this is what I did. I emailed her, <laughs> but what I, I just held my hand on the keyboard, and I did, <laughs> I did like 11 pages of just got nothing of nonsense, and she thought I sent a file that was corrupt, and I gave me the rest of the weekend to uh, finish it. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. I mean, this is in the era when, like, emails were still a little squirrely every now and again. Things didn't format correctly. Like, oh, I'm sorry. It didn't format properly. Just turn it in on Monday. And I was like, fuck yeah. Got it. <laughs> so then you wait until Sunday at eleven fifty nine. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, basically, spoke me out. Finish those last three pages. <clears throat> well, the middle class old badass of the month for February. Lo and behold, folks, we're gonna we're gonna have a vote at the end of the year. So we got a, the kid who beat Tetris, kid who got a bullet lodged in his head and partied yeah, for four days. Pretty easy. Right yeah, now. pretty easy right now. Yeah, we have an early ten more winter. months to go. Ten more months to go. 
Uh, Alan, tell all the would-be pussy partiers who like to dabble in happy hours on Friday, totally with all their wits about them and no lead in their head, where they can find the middle class holes. <laughs> That's That's well done, man. I like that. That was pretty good. You can find us on www.xvideos.com. Uh, <laughs> we're under the ebony section uh, oh. if you're looking for us. And just type in middle class holes. you find us lots of ebony uh, in our content. But if you're looking for us legitimately, please check us out on all your favorite social media platforms. We're at, at MDL class holes on Instagram and Twitter uh, or X or whatever the fuck Busk is calling it these days. And we're the middle class holes on Facebook and TikTok and fucking other shit that we may or may not have. I don't know. What do we have? Anything? Mm. Anyway, if you're listening to us and you don't want to see these beautiful fucking faces, then you can check us out on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. That's right. Emails. Sorry, we don't have emails. The emails are just not a thing. Uh, this week on listener comments, I was I was actually going to push this off until next week. As a guy, we got a little bit of get you know, little foot traffic and comments, but today. Uh, the uh, just shy of 3,000 <laughs> YouTube short, Sean Connery, Lord of the Maybe. Murray, you let us know about Sean Connery, was originally supposed to be casted as Gandalf. He turned it down because he didn't understand the character. And then between us, hilarity ensues. Uh, we got three really good comments. First one coming from Brian Micht, M I C T. He says, What the short didn't include was that Connery was also offered 15% of worldwide box office as an incentive to accept the role, but still turn it down. He walked away with 17 million before taxes for the Lord, uh, the league of extraordinary, the league of extraordinary gentlemen though. So I don't feel bad for him. How many, how, what was the percentage? 15% of worldwide box office. Good Lord. Let's see. Oh what my God. <laughs> yeah. I, th I replied and said, yeah, it's, it's tough to feel bad for a guy who died a millionaire many, many times over, but about the money he didn't receive, but 15% <laughs> of a like, lot of loot. I mean that, I mean, cause I mean the three movies themselves, I, I don't know what they, they must've grossed like a hundred billion dollars worldwide. Wow. Uh, let's see. So I mean, the yeah. the the franchise itself, the Lord of the Rings franchise itself, is the highest grossing film series of all time at three point oh oh four billion dollars. Now I'm trying to see what they made in the box office. Good God, are you? But are you? I mean, but okay. So we'll we'll add the. We'll just add the three of them up, right? The main, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just add the first, the first three of them up. So, but wait though, wasn't wasn't Gandalf in the other ones too? Yeah, he was in all of them actually. Six, so that's six movies. So, yeah, I mean, if we're gonna add it up, let's see. That's uh, Jesus Christ, these are big numbers. Yeah, he would have been a billionaire, I think, from just uh, be doing that role. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, but I mean, he'd be fucking really rugged. Really fucking rich. Um, dun, dun, dun. There's the there's the three. When did that? Oh, we didn't. That one doesn't count. Um, so at least the three. Let's just take the first three, right? And he would have made what fifteen percent is what we yeah. said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. We'll just take those three. We'll just double whatever number you come up with. We'll just double and just pretend they all made about the same. Uh, so fifteen percent off of the first three movies. This is box office shit. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind. So this is just box office money off the box office numbers. Doesn't have anything else yeah. to do with anything else. He would have made one hundred fifty four million five hundred twenty seven thousand one hundred ninety eight dollars. So he would have made about three hundred million dollars just for playing fucking Gandalf. Prop. Mm. Roughly about that. I mean, if we want to take that three point oh oh four billion or whatever, I think we're good. I think we you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think we realize that somebody made a fucking boneheaded mistake. And <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't get the part. Yeah. I don't um, understand. Jason Hill six nine three writes. This is pretty. I like the league. I liked the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. In the Simpsons, there's a gay bar called the League of Extra Horny Gentlemen. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> good. Yeah. Finally, uh, Dirk Hong seven one one four writes. He's 
asking about why this just doesn't happen in the movie. Why did the Eagles just not fly Frodo to Mount Doom to drop the ring into the lava and we'll just skip the whole movie? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, I don't know. That's the one I, I, like people always ask. But I'm pretty sure there's a reason for it. I just can't remember. Off yeah, there, there, I, well, yeah, maybe. Uh, plot. That, that's a good plot hole. I mean, maybe in the book yeah. there's a different reason too. Maybe like he had to go save somebody or yada, whatever. But yeah. I mean, but the eagles can't fly like that. <laughs> the, the eagles can't fly to the to Mount Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, uh, all right. <clears throat> well, that's uh, thank you for your comments, folks. That was that that one was a humdinger today. That really fucking chapped my ass with uh, like I said, three thousand views. So uh, next week we got a good bad movie review coming up. What do we got, Alan? Uh, it, Mars attacks. Mars, Mars Attacks, Attacks is going to be. Goddamn, I've never star seen Mars cast. Attacks, so oh. well, I can't wait for you to watch it. I actually, I just watched it this evening, pre this, because uh, I had nothing else to do, and oh boy, it's fun. Yeah, it's good. Okay, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you, you, you have the regular cast, and you get Martin Short. Yeah, listen, uh, Jack. Okay. I'll tell you right now, uh, Jack Nicholson's your president. Jack Nicholson oh. also plays a sleazy casino owner in Las Vegas, where a lot oh, right. of this movie takes. Now, I don't know why the aliens landed in Las Vegas, but we'll get there next week. Uh, Jim Brown. Jim Brown's in it. Yeah. Jack Nat Black. Natalie Portman. Jack Black. Yeah. It's star-studded. I'm, I'm not kidding. Martin Short. Michael J. Fox. Mar yeah. Mary Jessica, right. Mary Jessica okay. Parker. Okay, you know, you're like every time you sell it with one actor, you're not selling it with another. Like Martin Short doesn't do it for me, Jack Black does. Michael J. Fox does it for me. Fucking Sarah Jessica Parker does not. I'm just saying these are big names. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Sean Connery. Yeah, it's a good. I even, start I even saw. <laughs> I even saw Brandy's brother Ray J in the film. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Ray J was Brandy's brother. Oh, word! Yeah. <laughs> That film on set. Did you know? <laughs> uh, all right, folks. We'll catch you next week. Enjoy. I may need a hand when I'm just too drunk to stay. I don't need your sympathy, keep your judgment too. Cause you just give it a little pull, and my dick's strong like bull. Ready to satisfy my woman the whole night through. I get drunk most every day. Do you look?